Shapiro of Tov, covering Mount Stephen Bernan. You're watching Israeli News Live. Uh, friends, I'm sure many of you may already be aware of this, uh, but I felt it urgent that I bring this to your attention from our perspective as well. Um, but uh, Paul Joseph Watson uh, for InfoWars wrote an article about Kremlin Insider, War Might Begin Even Before U.S. Elections. Uh, I know this is something that a lot of people have feared for quite some time. Russian news, as we have brought out here on Israeli News Live back uh, maybe a month or two ago in the Russian language media where we have been covering this, that stated that they felt like that the United States may try to bring about a war uh, before the elections, uh, mainly because of the U.S. economy, the failing dollar, the situation that the U.S. dollar is actually in right now. Uh, so this was something that was brought out that we that we'd shared as well. But now we have uh, uh, this particular man here that you see on your screen here that Paul Joseph Watson is speaking about. This is Sergei Marko, Markov who is warning that there could come a war. Part of plan B, as it were, uh, as early as before the elections. And there's so much concern, so much information, whether it be WikiLeaks, be the latest, as we did in our video beforehand, uh, where O'Keefe uh, did the uh, revealing what the DNC is doing on the inside of the elections there, uh, just the real evil things that are going on in behind the scenes to try to make sure that Hillary Clinton becomes president of the United States. There's just so much uh, baggage that has come out on her like in no other election in the entire history of the world. Um, I don't know of any election that has been this bad. I mean, we look at uh, people go back and they they like to uh, throw a uh, uh, former politician there, uh, Richard Nixon, who got impeached for breaking into the offices just to spy on some things. Well, <laughs> there's been far, far greater uh, evidence of wrongdoing in this particular election. Uh, nothing precedented like it whatsoever uh, in the history of, uh, of politics. And, and maybe because of the fact that maybe Donald Trump is uh, not an insider. I know that there's those that say he is. There's those that say that he has a lot of links with uh, the Russians uh, in business, and therefore the Russians are trying to get him into power. Uh, well, one thing I would have to say on that, you know, we need stability in the world. Uh, you know, we, we've seen so much happen over the years, the collapse of the Soviet Union under uh, Ronald Reagan and, uh, and, and Gorbachev at that time there, uh, Ronald Reagan working with the Pope of Rome and so much evil that has happened here uh, and during Obama's administration and even that of George Bush before him. Uh, many people look at George Bush that he was doing a rally cry for the 9-11 attacks that happened on America. But there's a lot of evidence that there were people on the inside that knew what was happening on 9-11 and that it was more so done intentionally to justify to go to war. Now, I can certainly see where outside parties are used, just as we're seeing in the wars there in the Middle East right now. It is a proxy war, whether it be in Ukraine, whether it be in Syria, uh, it is a proxy war between Russia and the United States, but they're only using different soldiers in the battlefield instead. Um, uh, and maybe not so much Syria, but definitely in Ukraine. Uh, in Syria, we see that they just want to topple Bashar al-Assad. And so many times I see where John Kerry, even uh, Boris Johnson, run around saying that, uh, well, the war would be over if Russia would just, you know, stop and, and hand Assad over. The war would have been over as well had the U.S. quit backing all these thugs that go around murdering people, shelling innocent civilians, and beheading children. Uh, they talk about war crimes of Russia. Does anybody ever pay any attention to this? But at any rate here, I wanted to bring this to your attention. Going back here to Sergei uh, Markov, uh, uh, the Kremlin insider has warned that war with the United States could break out even uh, before the November election in the U.S. And he's urging citizens to stockpile food. Uh, I thought that was kind of interesting to do that. And I wanted to bring this to your attention mainly not to to be fearful in what we're seeing here, but as, as I think good measure, I think anyone that uh, regardless, uh, I don't necessarily believe that even if a war breaks out between the United States and Russia, I don't think it'll be a long war, uh, even, even if they do go nuclear. I, I still think that uh, it would be quickly ended, uh, 
but unfortunately there may be a lot of people that die as a result and that's what's concerning to me so for me I think an ounce of prevention is, is, is good uh, if we can do something that is uh, responsible uh, and like what the man says here to stock up on on personal supplies and that's what I would like to do to encourage people and not only the stockpiling of food you know the stockpile food is nothing if we're not mindful of our own soul if we've not taken the time to really do an inventory not on your pantry but an inventory in your heart to make sure that if we've done any wrongs to others that we would repent and make these things right and have our lives in order um, you know, I think that's the most important thing as well. And the very name that no one ever wants to mention in political circles because they say it's not politically correct. And that's the name of Jesus Christ or Yeshua HaMashiach as being a Jewish believer, the way I prefer to say. But to call on that name, you know, the name that is above all names and to call on Him and to, to seek uh, the Lord like we have never sought Him before, to know that everything is in order and that we are ready regardless of what comes in this world. And one thing's for sure, if we go into any kind of war, if the United States suffers an EMP attack or Europe suffers an EMP attack or vice versa, Russia, whatever the case may be that puts us back into the Stone Age, maybe then we'll get more serious about our prayer lives and really consider uh, before God on our knees the way we should be doing. And so I just wanted to, to, to remind you of these things as well. If you've got loved ones, just with love, just with love, talk to them. If the, if the door will open where they'll listen, you know, once again, just, you know, tell them. So, you know, I don't know how. Just let God lead you to talk to them about uh, the Lord, about Yeshua, to know uh, have they ever believed Him. Uh, I think it's a wonderful time that we should be doing these things at such a late hour to begin with. One thing I want to share with you real quick too, just to show you, uh, this is the documentary called Crimea The Way Home. Uh, it's a documentary by Andrei uh, Kondrashev. It was done by Russian state media. It was about the Crimean conflict. I'm going to play you about two minutes of this. I'll just I'll keep the volume down a little bit because I need to read to you the the, the subtitles here. Um, so let me just back the volume down a little bit here on the screen here. I wanted you to see this because, and I'll post a link for this video here in the channel there. For the longest time, the United States did not want the West to see this video. But to me, this kind of expresses a couple of things. It expresses that one, Russia is willing to stand their ground, but secondly, it also lets us know that uh, President Putin doesn't want a war with the West. Uh, contrary to what we're seeing from the Obama administration, John Kerry, uh, you know, they, they, you know, when they always talk about, you know, if Russia and Syria would just stop this bombing campaign, civilian lives could be saved. But yet they still have not been able to show you video of the planes dropping the bombs that are killing the children. Isn't it interesting? And yet John Kerry in the leaked audio clearly says, we need video footage of the bombs doing it, but they can't produce it. They do, if you look at Vanessa Bealey in, in the reporting that she's been doing on Syria, and she's been there on the ground, she knows so, but they continue to show more and more video of the same children that they're using there uh, on, from the White Helmets. They keep using the same children over and over and over to be bomb, bomb victims or even adults, etc. And it seems to be more propaganda, whereas if you look at the children that are being killed by the rebels who are intentionally shelling civilians there in the uh, in the um, the government held side of Western Aleppo, uh, we see the children dying. They're targeted intentionally, and yet all they do is talk about on the news that it's Russia, 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 Syria, 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 and they're trying to justify humanitarian crisis to be able to over topple Assad. And Kerry and all the rest of these world leaders that are about the new world order continually keep saying that. Assad's got to go. If Assad would step down, then all this would end. Well, you know, if they would stop backing these thugs that behead children and murder children and intentionally target civilians, whereas Russia's trying to target, even Syria's trying to target these, these war criminals that are there, but if they would stop backing these war criminals, 
this war would have already probably been close to being over. Had the United States not been so proud and boastful because of their new world order, which is, you guys remember the other day, uh, this man Brian comes on and tells me that the new world order is coming and it is a Anglo-American uh, uh, Israeli new world order and I can either be a part of it or basically be wiped out because I'm not a part of it. Uh, Russia believes in sovereignty and then even he even acknowledges this in his own comment to me Russia believes in a sovereign that each nation should govern its own sovereign affairs Isn't it interesting that the New World Order is wants hegemony over the entire earth they want to rule the world the Pope of Rome is their king but the beast that the Pope is riding the military power is NATO it is the United States, it is Great Britain, and uh, I still have got to do an in-depth article for you about this. But even this part about Britain today uh, cutting off the funds to RT, if this is not a case of you can't buy or sell, saving you take the mark of the beast, I don't know what it is. But it's just being done right now on a larger scale, on a political scale. Now they're backtracking, according to the latest article this evening from RT, from a discussion. UK banks say it will review the closure of RT accounts. They're trying to send a message to Russia. You either obey us or we'll financially take everything from you. Isn't that what it says in Revelation as well? You can't buy or sell saving you take the mark. So if RT doesn't go along and get Russia to go along with the New World Order, they could not do business. They could not buy nor sell inside of uh, Britain to be able to run their RT news. And therefore you would not get to see their side of the story. And I'm not gonna say that they're not biased towards Russia, it's their home country. Sure they are. Even as Americans, we were biased about our own country. It wasn't until I began to see both sides of the story that I've been, been able to put, a, put aside the bias and just for once examine what's going on on both sides. And when I see Russia doing wrong, I call it out. In fact, there was even a news article that came out not too long ago. I haven't said it as of yet because I haven't had a chance to put it together, but to where they're showing in Ukraine to where even some of the uh, separatists also, some of the journalists that they had there were willing to stage a video to make it look good for their side as well. So yes, there is propaganda that comes out of Eastern, even the separatists, and it's a shame on them. Tell the truth like it is. We don't need propaganda. That's what's wrong with this world today. There is too much propaganda. And everybody is doing their side of the story so that they can just tell you what they want to know. Well, let me tell you something. I was born in America. I love my country. I am a Jew by birth. I love Israel as well, very much so. But we have to face the facts. When evil is done, we've got to confess what's being done. We've got to tell what's true. And it doesn't mean... You know, it's just like, for example, President Bashar al-Assad, his father warred against Israel on three occasions, 67, 72, and I know something in 1980-something as well. You know, so there is a bitter uh, past between Syria and Israel. But anyway, that's not the point I wanted to get into right now. Uh, we'll go into these things. This is what we're this is what we try to do that. We're trying to uncover what's really happening on both sides. I try to see the evidence that's there and bring that evidence out to you. And especially if it relates to prophecy, biblical prophecy, we're trying to bring that out as well from prophetic news point as well here. And as far as in-depth teachings, uh, sometimes I'll bring them out on here, but as well on Danoon Institute, our new YouTube channel there, we'll be bringing out more and more there. And we're about to really unload a lot of teachings on that channel. So if you want to subscribe, go ahead and, and join us over there. Let's get back over here to this video here that I want to share with you here. It starts out, God grant they see and know that we have weapons without parallel in the world. This was what one of the commanders was saying here. Now, Putin does say it. I don't know if it'll be in this part of the film I'm going to show you. But Putin also had made this statement about the S-400 system that they had put there on Crimea back when the United States was bringing in the whole NATO coalition into the Black Sea. Putin clear, clearly says they were coming to take Crimea. So they intentionally put their missile system in a wide open area, Putin claims, in order for the U.S. satellites to see that they were there and to know that they meant business. Because he said, we didn't want a war. We don't want a global conflict. 
But look at what they say here. I want you to see for yourself the way the Russians were thinking and what was really going on over Crimea that the West claims it was annexed. Even, even uh, one of Russia's strongest supporters, uh, President Zaman of the Czech Republic, says it was annexed. But he also says it was part of Russia originally and they, they should have a right because the people should have a right to vote if they go back to Russia or if they be, become part of Ukraine. And I think that even though that the West says that it was not so, that, that it was really a coercion and all this kind of good stuff, I don't think it was. You have to remember about 90% of that population are Russian descent and have always been part of the Russian Empire when uh, Crimea used to be a part of Russia for over 200 years. I think what it was is they were afraid of the Ukrainians through this nationalistic thing where they were killing people that had Russian descent to begin with that they would be massacred. So they may have become part of Russia because of fear of what the neo-Nazis of Ukraine were doing under Petro Poroshenko. Anyway, let's quickly take a couple of minutes here and let me show you some of this. It says, God grant they see now what, what we have, weapons without parallel in the world. What can this system do, he asked. It is unique because it can fire a state-of-the-art supersonic missile that is invulnerable to all anti-missile defense weapons and cannot be detected by radar. This is, by the way, guys, this is what this S-300 or S-400 system is. They say that it's unstoppable. So what Israel, for example, uses in Israel to, de to defend itself from the missiles that come in there, the Patriots, et cetera, that we have in America, they can't stop this incoming missile from this system here. He said this missile, I'll turn up just a little bit so those of you that can maybe understand can hear it. This missile can, can attack... Uh, and for example, hit a target hiding behind a natural obstacle, such as a mountain or a hill. This missile will identify a target and destroy it 100% guaranteed. Remark, Battalion Combat Alert, Assume Launch Condition 1. Now this is, they're reenacting what happened that day where the uh, uh, USS, uh, I forget which, which ship that was, I'll show it in a minute, which one was coming in with the, uh, with the NATO forces. Remark, crew combat alert. Remark, prepare for a missile strike, single target. Then the Alexander Vikto is the Admiral and the Commander and the Chief of Russia's Black Sea Fleet. At that time, we had the cruise, cruiser Mavko that can fire missiles with a longer range than that of the Bastions. But its missiles were developed in the 1970s, while Bastions is an advanced weapon armed with unique missiles that likes which Crimea has never had. The monitors on board the cruiser of the Moskov, the flagship of the Black Sea Fleet, showed clearly that a U.S. destroyer was heading confidently towards the Crimean coast to bring the peninsula within the range of its Tomahawk missiles. Suddenly, the Bastion missile system radar monolith came to life near Sevastopol. Monolith information source. The target type, a cruiser. Target identification, a hostile. How did the destroyer, the Donald Cook, behave when she felt that our missiles were fixed on it? He says, it veered south and headed for the Bosphorus at full speed. So in fact, that this fix told them that they were at gunpoint, didn't it? Yes, they were gunpoint and likely to come under strike at any moment. He says, according to the Commander-in-Chief Alexander Vitko, it's unlikely that the Black Sea had ever seen anything like it, like the one that the U.S. Donald Cook made as it was running from the Bastion's fix. Was it clear to you when you were talking with the Western leaders that they would not interfere militarily? 
Of course not. That couldn't be clear at first. That's why I had to immediately orient our armed forces in this way at the beginning. More than that, I issued direct orders with regard to Russia's possible behavior in any scenario. We were ready to do that. I talked to my colleagues openly, telling them just as I'm telling you now, that historically this is Russian territory where Russians live. Now he's speaking about Crimea and that regards there, that Crimea has always been a part of Russia for since the 1700s. It was only in 1956 that the uh, administrative power of Crimea was handed over to Ukraine during the Soviet Union era. But supposedly, it, uh, it has not been actually given the entire island over to them. It says they came under threat, and there was no way we could abandon them. We were not the ones who carried out the government coup. Nationalists and other extremists did. You're, you supported them, but where are you? He's speaking about America. You supported them, but where are you? thousands of kilometers away, but we are here, and this is our land. What do you want to fight for? You don't know. We do know. We are ready to do so. This is an honest and open stand. This is how it is. For this reason, I don't think anyone wanted to turn the situation into a global, global conflict of any kind. We were not looking for trouble. They just forced us to act this way. That's what I think is very important. I would like to repeat that we were ready for the worst case scenario. However, I assumed that it would go, go that far. I assumed that it would not go that far. There was no need to excessively fuel tensions. As we were later told, the defense ministry there were military specialists back then who proposed uh, that Vladimir Putin as uh, commander-in-chief, we can actually stop here, guys. The one thing that does come up in this documentary is the question comes up as far as were they ready to use nuclear weapons, and Putin does indicate that yes, if it came down to it, they would use nuclear weapons. And so, friends, what I'm trying to mention as well when we look at this, Putin was there willing to defend the people there because they were Russian people that lived in this country. Another thing that I think is interesting as well is to note is that now that we're dealing with Syria uh, and the U.S. really determined that they're going to bring Syria under the New World Order and from everything that we can see thus far from a lot of people that have leaked out information as we shared the other day, uh, you have Commander Gen General, uh, former Commander General Wesley Clark. Uh, you have, uh, uh, I forget the name of the uh, senator, I think it was Cook, but I uh, may have that wrong. But, but anyway, you have so many voices that are out there that clearly knew that Syria was to come under a new world order as well. They want to bring the entire world under this new world order. And eventually, their whole hope is to also bring Russia. And that's what was really happening at the collapse of the Soviet Union. It was to bring Russia under the command of the new world order. But Putin actually caused those plans to derail. Uh, they were doing very good when they had Yeltsin in there because Yeltsin was drunk most of the time and so therefore he didn't work very good as a commander-in-chief and he was basically just selling the entire country over to the West. Uh, they even drafted a new Bill of Rights for Russia. They were changing the laws. Everything was happening very rapidly. Uh, but then Yeltsin brought in, uh, as we see here, President Vladimir Putin. He brought him in as a prime minister at first and then later he goes to the ranks of president and he began to turn the country around and to begin to rebuild the nationalist pride of Russia back up and also built the economy back up for the Russian people. And now 
he is there trying to fight a new world order. As he clearly states himself, he's trying to fight a new world order. He is trying to stop the elitists. He has also paid the debts off of the Rothschilds that were in his country. And he did, like Hungary, he threw the Rothschild banks out of his country. And so this is what the elitists are so much against. And right now, what I am watching, especially if we look in light of biblical prophecy, as we have shared recently about the, as so many of us know that the, the fall of Damascus is clearly written in, in chapter uh, 17 of Isaiah. We also see it in Jeremiah chapter 49 as well. It's coming. It's only a matter of time. And the only way that I can see that the West will be able to take out the missile system that Russia has uh, will be an overwhelming response of air power and cruise missiles, etc. To the, if they do it overwhelmingly to where Russia cannot reload fast enough, that's how they'll do it. But they will do it at a major cost of loss of life and planes and everything as a result. Because if Russia can begin to bring these down, they will. And I'm sure they'll be trying all kinds of things, jamming systems, etc. But as we see the tensions growing, and we see, as you saw here, Russia was willing to protect its people then, they'll do it now. Because you have to remember, Russia is very embedded inside of the Syrian military there trying to help protect Bashar al-Assad uh, from a complete takeover. And it's not just a matter of a takeover of President Bashar al-Assad, uh, the Syrian people, their country, but it's also because Putin feels like he's fighting so that it does not become the world ran by one antichrist. That's what it comes down to, friends. The antichrist wants to control the entire world. And it's not Barack Obama that's the antichrist. I mean, there's some that believe he is. That's okay. I don't have a problem with that. Maybe he is. But I believe that it's the Vatican pulling the strings of the NATO coalition. And it's very hard to connect them to all of this, but they are definitely connected there. All you have to do is look to see where all the world leaders go to get their final approval, who is the peacemaker, etc. But the time is very rapidly approaching to where they're going to make their move. And they're going to they're going to try to bring down not only Syria, but if it comes to it, Russia as well. This is why we see Russia completely surrounded by NATO on every side. And as the man that wrote the little comment to me the other day in the comment section there that we made public on one of our videos there, he said, this is the hegemony of the new world order. This is what they want to do. It is the Anglo American Israeli, as he put it, new world order. Now that's not the Israeli people, by the way, friends. Now, let me just clarify that as well. The majority of the Israeli people have no idea of the Illuminati Rothschilds that are in behind the scene. That's a very small minority. But that little minority is wanting to put the Pope of Rome at the head of the world, uh, at the head of the world stage there in Jerusalem. They've been getting Jerusalem ready as an international, United Nations controlled international city. And unfortunately, my Jewish brothers and sisters that live in Israel have no idea. But we're going to expose it one step at a time. And we're going to be giving you more of that information as well. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the work we do here, we do really do need your help in what we do. And we thank you for, for being a part of that. You can go to IsraeliNewsLive.org. You see it here on your screen here at the end of this video, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Or IsraelReturns.com, either website there. And you can go. Thank you for watching. Shalom.